hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well guys in this video we will be seeing cognizant gen c next interview experience basically uh, this is one of the recent interview experiences of one of the subscribers of our channel so we will be seeing all the questions in detail and along with the questions i will also give you sample answers so that you can prepare well for your upcoming gen c interviews okay so we will be discussing everything in detail make sure to watch the video till complete end and if you have any doubts let me know in the comment section i will try to answer all your doubts in the comments before we start the video if you are new to my channel make sure to subscribe to the channel because that is the most important thing otherwise any further videos that i will upload you will not get any notification usually i upload off campus types and placement preparation related material on my channel which is going to be super helpful for you also if there is a complete clip uh, Cognizant preparation playlist on my channel. Make sure to check that playlist. You will find a lot of Gen C interview experiences for different roles Gen C, Gen C Next, and Gen C Pro. So let's get started with today's interview experience. And first of all, let's see what are the questions and timelines for uh, all the questions that was there. So see, uh, there were different questions basically asked to the candidate for project discussion. There were around ten minutes that were took. Okay, and the questions that were asked was, can you briefly explain your project? Okay, so how this this question can be answered is. and basically giving you one you know template to uh, use in your like answers but this is not mandatory that you should also use the same you have to customize it according to your own project okay so even possible answer can be my project was a and then you have to mention your project name which aim to your goal of project because every project should have a goal okay what it is doing if it is a web development project then you know what Uh, purpose it is serving is it for a business is it a shopping site e-commerce site what it is right so in that way you have to tell the goal of your project like example is uh, optimizing the data processing building a web application whatever okay i developed it using c sharp and dot net now it is not mandatory that your cluster was c sharp so you have to tell the project on c sharp only i'm just taking it one example so i developed it using c sharp and dot net on the back end with sql server for database management the project implemented object oriented programming principles restful apis and used entity framework for database interactions one of the challenges was and you can mention your challenge that came in your project and you can mention that how you resolved your uh, challenge by telling the solution of that challenge so basically in this way you have to answer your uh, like project uh, question let's now move on to the next question which is what was your role in the project so basically you know uh, if you are uh, in your college majority of the people uh, make the projects in groups right so if it is a team project then you have to tell what was your role into that project or the, uh, or the other case can be if you have created an individual project then you don't have to worry about that you can just say that uh, this project is completely made by me so i am the only one who has uh, taken care of all the aspects of the project okay to answer this question if you are in a like team uh, how can you answer it i worked primarily on back end development using c sharp and dot not dot net core my responsibilities include designing apis optimizing database queries and implementing security features additionally i contributed to debugging and performance optimization now as i already said these are just the template answers which i have taken for all of you you have to take this and use it according to your customized data or your project data and then fill and completely prepare your answers okay i would say that if you require just watch this video twice or thrice and write all the answers in a notebook so that you can prepare well okay don't worry about preparation because you should prepare well because interview is the last stage once your interview is done then your next phase is just Uh, offer letter generation so you should be prepared very well for your interviews especially for the technical questions because hr questions are fine if you are confident while answering then also it, it will do but technical questions uh, if you don't have idea then you can't answer those answers right moving on to the next question what challenges did you faced and how did you solve them okay so i am telling i told you right that 10 minutes uh, it took for project based question so these all questions were asked in those 10 minutes only okay so see you can answer one of your challenge that you faced in your project uh, one such answer can be a major challenge was optimizing api response time initially fetching large data sets caused performance issues i solved it by impl implementing pagination stored procedures and caching mechanisms using redis this reduced the api response time by 40% basically you have to tell what was the challenge uh, and then how you were resolved it moving on now uh, see now project based questions around 10 minutes it took and then after technical questions were asked based, uh, and for that it took 20 to 25 minutes okay so if i tell you the total time for this interview experience it was like uh, 40 minutes around 40 to 45 minutes okay completely end to end from introduction to like going out okay it was around 40 minutes you can say okay so in c sharp uh, 
technical round basically c sharp was the cluster of the candidate okay so some questions on c sharp will be asked and uh, some questions on generic interviews will be asked if you have not prepared from my videos uh, please i would highly suggest that prepare from those playlists which i have already told you because i have already covered how can you answer oops concepts and what are the most asked questions in gen c interviews okay okay so see oops concepts and code execution based questions were asked what are the four pillars of oops how can you answer it oops consists of four pillars uh, the, or the four pillars of oops are encapsulation inheritance polymorphism and abstraction and then if this question is asked to you in general you don't have to explain too much about each uh, pillars just one line you is fine or just a uh, small you know one sentence is fine for each pillars or features so encapsulation is wrapping data and methods inside a class using private and public access modifiers inheritance is allowing inheritance means allowing one class to inherit from other using uh, like this in c sharp again it is not mandatory that you should always answer based on your clusters only it's fine i have taken some ans answers in this way that based on your clusters you can answer polymorphism is overloading and overriding methods to achieve flexibility and abstraction is hiding implementation details using abstract classes and interfaces moving on explain encapsulation with an example okay so we have the answer for this one here encapsulation is achieved using private variables and public methods benefit of encapsulation is it prevents data direct modification and ensures security now sometimes you know they can ask you to write a basic code snippet the, not the actual mm -hmm. implementation code in this way just uh, like uh, tell us how encapsulation is implemented so in this way you can give basic example like there is a class employee and this is the private variable that is employee name okay and encapsulation is performed using this one that is uh, like uh, encapsulation is achieved here by using private variables and public method so public method that we are having here is get name and set name okay and uh, get uh, under get name we are using the private uh, method okay hope you have understood it let's now move on to the next question now guys if you want to prepare in detail of, on oops i would highly suggest that watch this video on my channel uh, on my channel in this playlist cognizant prep okay gen c interview preparation oops in one shot this will be super helpful because i've already covered all the possible questions on oops in that video let's now move on to the next question what is the difference between abstract class and inheritance so let's see the answer for this one so uh, based on different features you can tell the like differences based on uh, like met method definition abstract class can have implemented and abstract methods in interface only method declaration no implementation is there and then when it comes to multiple inheritance it is not supported in abstract class and in uh, in interface it is supported fields and properties it uh, abstract classes can have fields uh, whereas interfaces cannot have fields only properties are there and when it comes to usage abstract classes you are used for common behavior whereas interfaces are used for multiple functionalities here is one code example to like to give a better explanation but there is very high chance that they won't ask you code example for this question but just for completeness sake i have taken it you can have a look at it moving on to the next question how memory is managed in c sharp stack versus heap okay so see let's see the answer for it see it like obviously your cluster was c sharp so they might ask you question in this way but this is just a normal question that is well, how many uh, how memory is managed in stack and heap okay so you have to just answer that don't get confused or you know stress that they are asking based on c sharp these are general questions just asked uh, by putting name of c sharp okay let's see the answer for this one stack memory it stores value types like integer double character and method execution flow memory is managed automatically whereas heap memory it stores reference types classes arrays objects objects are allocated dynamically and cleaned by garbage collector here is the example for that now is uh, as i told you in the beginning of the video i have just taken very sa basic sample answers if you want to prepare in a better way you should take this question go to google search for it try to understand in detail and prepare your own answer in your notebook okay but if you are very short of time and don't have much time these answers will also do at the last moment okay moving on to the next question uh, okay so now sql queries based questions are also very frequently asked as you have if you have watched my videos you must have already aware so sql queries are like must to prepare before uh, before your jc interviews they will be definitely asked okay let's see the questions that were asked based on sql queries what are the different types of jo sql joins okay this is the most asked questions okay most asked question i would say in jc interviews okay basically like if out of 10 interview experiences this comes in like six to seven interviews okay so that's why i'm saying this is the most asked interview questions in jc interviews 
let's see the answer for this one so the different types of sql joints are inner join left join right join and full outer join you can give a basic explanation of each join like inner join returns common records from both tables left join returns all records from left table plus matching records from the right table right join returns all records from the right table plus matching records from the left table and full outer join returns all records from both of the tables moving on to our next question write an sql query to fetch employee name and department name using a join okay so these types of sql based queries also they will ask you to write then and there and these won't be that much hard if you have prepared a uh, basic also it, you can answer it very easily let's see the answer for this one select employees.emp name departments.dept name from employees employees is the table name basically inner join departments on employees.department id which uh, equals to department.department .department id basically this query joins the employees and departments table based on the common department id okay Moving on, how do you find second highest salary in SQL? So the answer for this will be select max, okay, maximum salaries from employees where salary is less than and then you have to put this condition that is select max salary from employees. Basically, this is the SQL query that will be the answer for this question. This will find the highest salary below the maximum salary. Moving on. Now, few HR questions will also be asked, okay, and uh, let's see what are the HR questions that were asked. Tell me about yourself. This is basically your intro part, okay, introduction you have to give in this question. Now, uh, while answering this question, you have to take care of few things like uh, your skill set, your project details, okay, and if you have done any extracurriculars, you can mention that, extracurricular, and then your educational details, okay. So these things you should add it your introduction should not exceed more than 30 to 40 seconds and make sure that whatever you are talking in your introduction part you should know everything about it because you know sometimes what happens based on your introduction only they will ask you question for example if you have told in your introduction that i am aware of java or i am aware of sql then going forward they will ask you questions on that only so make uh, or prepare your introduction very mindfully one simple answer I have taken. This is very basic answer. I would not suggest you to go with this answer. Prepare your own customized answer. I have discussed it in a lot other videos. You can watch it from here or from there or you can take it from the internet or you can prepare one for yourself. Okay. Uh, based on these pointers which I have given you. Okay. Let's see the answer. Myself, you have to tell your name and you have to tell your experience like in the skill set that you have. I have experiences .NET, SQL and object oriented programming. I have worked on projects involving API development, performance optimization and database management. My strengths include problem solving, writing clean code and working in a collaborative environment. Okay. Moving on to the next HR question that we have. Why do you want to join Cognizant? The answer for this can be Cognizant is known for its innovation and professional growth. I want to work in an environment where, can, where I can apply my uh, development skills and contribute to real world projects while learning from industry experts okay moving on where do you see yourself in five years so the answer for this can be i see myself as a lead developer or software architect with deep expertise in c sharp and cloud technologies i want to mentor juniors and contribute to high impact projects next question that we have is do you have any questions for us basically this will be your last question of the interview okay and i would highly suggest that never say no for this question okay never say no uh, that i don't have any question at least try to ask one basic question some things to keep in mind while asking this question is uh, that you should not ask very tough question to the interviewer for which they don't even have the answer you should not ask for feedbacks okay feedbacks is a no complete no because they are strictly told that they can't give any feedbacks in the interviews okay so you should not ask for the feedback you should not ask very tough questions okay you should not ask any out of the box question okay out of the box means uh, which is irrelevant okay not ask that ask very basic question which you might already have the answer for but you just want to showcase them that you are actually looking for this for this job and you are actually interested in getting this job okay so you have to make uh, them understand or you have to give your impression in such a way okay so what one question that you can ask is uh, yes i'd love to know about the tech stem or the team structure for the project i might be working on if i get selected for this job okay so these types of basic question you can ask I think I have tried to cover all the questions that were asked to the candidate and if you have any doubts please put it in the comment section I will answer all your doubts you can join me on telegram and you can follow me on instagram for more further content and queries and make sure to subscribe to the channel because there is a lot more content that is going to come on the channel that's all for this video thanks for watching the video and if you have found the video helpful please write the word helpful in the comment section with that I get to know how many of you are preparing for your gen c interviews